The movie begins with a teacher named Alexa falling in love with another teacher named Maximilian, a man who is very interested in looking at the stars through his telescope. Soon after, they get married and Alexa is pregnant. Maximilian wants to name the child Jupiter, but Alexa does not want that name because she thinks it is silly. While they are playfully arguing with each other about the name, a group of thieves suddenly barges into the room and robs them. When the thieves are stealing his telescope, Maximilian pleads for them to spare it, but the thieves kill him instantly. They then immediately leave the place after robbing. Due to this tragic event, Alexa decides to go to Chicago to move in with her relatives so that she can have a better life for herself and her unborn child. Eventually, Alexa's child is born while they are aboard a ship en route to America. In memory of her husband, she names the baby girl Jupiter. Growing up, Jupiter is told by her aunt that she is destined to achieve greatness and find someone that will love her. But as soon as she becomes an adult, Jupiter finds out that life is very hard for an immigrant family. The only job that they can find is cleaning and maintaining the house of rich people, which Jupiter pretty much hates. At this time, on an abandoned planet, three siblings from the powerful Abrasax dynasty named Balaam, Kalik, and Titus are talking about the recent harvesting from Earth. It turns out that they have been turning humans into youth potions for their use. Their mother just died recently and left each one of them some planets to inherit. Out of the three, Balaam, the eldest sibling, has been given the ownership of Earth. Titus, the youngest, wants Balaam to give up Earth because he's interested in this particular planet. Balaam, however, does not respond and just leaves silently. Secretly, the two brothers are already making a move against each other by searching for a woman who is said to be the reincarnation of their mother. Due to the existence of this woman, who turns out to be Jupiter, neither one of them can completely own Earth because the planet belongs to her by default. Their goal is either to kill her or convince her to let go of Earth. For this reason, Titus hires a legendary hunter named Cain to find this woman. One night, when Cain is walking in the dark streets of Chicago to find her, three bounty hunters who work for Balaam spot him. When he enters a building to seek more information, the three hunters prepare an ambush for him outside. After he obtains this information he needs, Cain senses the ambush, so he already prepares his weapons and shield. A brief battle then ensues in the alley between them, but the three are no match for him, so Cain quickly runs away. Meanwhile, Balaam has just returned to his domain on another planet, which is hidden inside a great red storm. Upon arriving there, he is immediately informed by his assistant named Mr. White about the whereabouts of Jupiter. Learning this, Balaam orders to quickly finish her so that he can finally own Earth without anyone challenging his claim. Back on Earth, Jupiter is finding a dress for her friend, but she hears a scream from the other room. Upon looking, she sees a group of thin gray aliens gathering around her friend's floating body. They then become confused because this woman seems not the one they are looking for. While this happens, Jupiter takes a picture but her phone suddenly rings. As such, the gray aliens let go of her friend and wipe off their memory before leaving. The two friends later wake up without remembering the aliens. Later that night, Jupiter eats with Alexa, her aunt, and her cousin, Vasily, who assigns the work for all of them. She asks Vasily for some money to buy the telescope that she wants for a long time. However, Vasily tells her to be smart and save her money instead. Out of no choice, she turns to another cousin, Vladi, who secretly offers her to sell her egg cells to earn money. The following day, Jupiter goes to the fertility clinic to execute this plan. While nervously waiting for the operation, she notices the picture of aliens that she has in her phone but she cannot recall ever taking this picture, which confuses her. Before she can rationalize it, the nurse calls her name for the operation to remove her egg cells. However, it turns out that the doctors and nurses are actually aliens in disguise under Balaam's command. After matching Jupiter's gene, the aliens confirm her identity and proceed to tie her up and attempt to kill her. But this attempt is thwarted by the sudden arrival of Cain, who immediately defeats the thin gray aliens one by one. He then rescues Jupiter, who has lost consciousness. 
Afterward, Jupiter wakes up from a 12-hour slumber. Since Cain is still unfamiliar to her, she quickly takes the gun near her bed and points it towards him. Cain then informs her that she is being hunted due to the gene that she has. He reveals that he is a half-human, half-wolf being that comes from another planet. To prove this, he shows her the various technological advancements that he has, such as a portal and a pair of flying boots. After that, Cain plans to take Jupiter to leave Earth by ascending towards an invisible spaceship, but he is halted by the sudden arrival of enemy ships sent by Balaam. Balaam's forces immediately destroy the spaceship that Jupiter and Cain are boarding, causing the two to fall down. Cain catches her and proceeds to launch a successful counterattack against the enemies using an enemy spaceship he stole. After barely surviving the enemy onslaught, Cain and Jupiter decide to continue their journey via car. While he is driving, he explains to her that a conflict occurs within the Abrasax family and that she is their primary target. Meanwhile, Inside Balaam's domain, Balaam uses a holographic image to rewind what happened inside the clinic and sees Jupiter was taken away by Cain. Afterwards, he warns his lizard general that he will hold him accountable if they fail to retrieve Jupiter again. Back on Earth, Jupiter sees that Cain is bleeding from his sides. Luckily, she finds a sanitary napkin to treat his wound. They then drive to a house that is filled with bees to find Cain's old friend named Stinger who is a former space police. After he knocks at the door, Stinger immediately attacks him as a sort of welcome, leading to a one-sided fight in favor of Stinger. However, their fight is abruptly ended when all the bees suddenly follow Jupiter's hands, prompting Stinger to bow down and refer to her as Your Majesty. Inside Stinger's house, Kane's wound is instantly healed when Stinger sprays some magic liquid over it. Jupiter then sees two scars behind his back, and Stinger tells her that Cain once had military wings, but they were chopped off for attacking royalty members. Because Stinger was his commanding officer, both of them were removed from office. She then asks Stinger how he knows she is royalty, and he replies that the bees can recognize if someone has royal blood. After that, Stinger informs the two about Balaam's blockade of Earth, which means that no spaceship can enter or leave. However, the space police will retrieve them tomorrow. Jupiter is curious about the origin of humanity, and Stinger tells her that humans are actually aliens that were brought over to Earth for the purpose of being harvested soon. Before she can inquire further about this harvest that Stinger mentioned, Kane announces the arrival of some enemies outside the house, including the three bounty hunters from earlier. Stinger then takes her away, while Kane stays behind to give them time to escape. But despite this, Stinger and Juniper are still attacked by aliens. Stinger then goes down from a shockwave caused by one of the bounty hunters. Jupiter is supposed to be the next one to be attacked, but she is saved by the swarm of bees. She then runs to the cornfield while being chased by the aliens. There, she encounters a bounty hunter who immediately blasts her with a shockwave, making her fall unconscious. When Jupiter is about to be killed, Two bounty hunters suddenly betray and immediately kill other hunters. As the traders are taking Jupiter away in their spaceship, Kane manages to catch up with the ship undetected. The spaceship then goes to a planet owned by Kalik, the middle child in Abrasak's siblings. Before he can be seen, Kane moves to a roof to observe what is happening from afar. It is revealed that the two bounty hunters are secretly working for Kalik. That night, Jupiter wakes up and finds that she is wearing a new, elegant dress in an unfamiliar house. Kalik then greets her and informs her that she is actually a reincarnation of the Abrasak's mother. She explains that the gene extracted from humans is important to them because it makes their lives longer. Kalik then takes Jupiter to a pool somewhere in the castle where she demonstrates that by dipping into a pool of genes, she can obtain a longer life. After this demonstration, the revitalized Kalik tells her that she must claim the title because that is her right as a reincarnation of the Abrasak's mother. Meanwhile, Cain tries to stealthily maneuver into the castle to find Jupiter, but the enemy soon spots him, making him fight his way through them. He later arrives at the location of the two women and immediately points a gun at Kalik's head. Seeing this, Kalik is not panicked and tells them that she has no interest in power at all. Moreover, she has already contacted the space police to escort Jupiter away. 
Soon after, Jupiter and Kane are welcomed by the personnel of the Space Police's ship, one of which includes Stinger, who has survived the earlier attack. Meanwhile, in Balaam's domain, Balaam executes his general due to another failure under his command, replacing him with a similar lizard named Gregan to get Jupiter. Back in the Space Police's ship, Jupiter attempts to kiss Kane, but he responds by saying that they are not meant for each other. They later arrive at a planet to process Jupiter's title as an official royalty with the assistance of an android named Bob. However, they immediately find the bureaucratic process to be tedious due to its many requirements and technicalities. Later on, Bob is forced to bribe an official so that the process can finally move. Because of this, Jupiter is able to obtain a seal on her wrist that officially identifies her as royalty. She is also given a handbook that contains the code and conducts of a royal person. But after the process, Stinger appears out of nowhere and betrays them. It turns out that Stinger has contacted Titus, leading Jupiter and Kane to be transferred to Titus' ship. However, as soon as she arrives there, she demands to go home immediately. Titus grants her request to go back home, but on the condition of having dinner with him first, which she accepts. Unbeknownst to her, Kane is imprisoned by Titus' soldiers. At the dinner, Jupiter immediately asks for Kane's whereabouts. Titus responds that since Kane betrays him by refusing to send Jupiter to him, he will be immediately returned to his place of origin. Afterward, he shows her a room full of youth potions. Titus reveals to her that these potions are made from humans and that Earth, like other planets, are their farms. Jupiter is in disbelief. Titus tells her that his mother felt guilt about it near the end of her life and that she was murdered when she tried to stop such horrible business. Titus wants to continue his mother's mission to stop the production of youth potions. It is here that Titus proposes to marry Jupiter so that she can be his heir, thus securing the lives on the planets that he owns. This sudden proposal shocks Jupiter and she asks for some time to think about it. After that, Titus orders for Cain's execution by tossing him to space without informing Jupiter about it. Before he throws Cain out of his spaceship, Titus reveals to him that he plans to kill Jupiter. Cain then kicks something in the wall before he gets tossed out, causing some debris to go out with him. Luckily, these debris turn out to be packets of emergency protective gear which help him escape death. However, Titus' spaceship teleports away, leaving him alone in the vastness of space floating with only minutes of air left. Fortunately, he is rescued eventually by the space police just as he is about to lose consciousness for losing air. Meanwhile, on Earth, Jupiter's family has just learned about what Vladdy has done to Jupiter with Vasily quickly punishing him for treating his cousin like a chicken. Suddenly, Gringan and his men appear in the dining room of their house to kidnap them. On the ship en route to Earth, Jupiter is having second thoughts about the marriage proposal. She then asks for Cain, but Titus lies that Cain has left. He gives her an object that will pardon Cain and Stinger in order for her to trust him. As such, Jupiter finally accepts the marriage just as Titus has planned. Meanwhile, Cain asks for the help of Stinger even though he is a traitor and Stinger admits that he only betrayed him due to his daughter's illness. As such, the two ex-military men set their goals of rescuing Jupiter while her marriage is underway. The space police demand Titus' ship to allow them to board, but Titus orders his soldiers to stop them at all costs. This leads into a space battle in which the space police deploy Kane and Stinger to fight against Titus' whole fleet. While this battle is ongoing, Titus and Jupiter are simultaneously exchanging their vows, although she is hesitant to do so. To seal the marriage, a symbolic ring must be printed on the ring finger of each person. With Titus already done with this, it is now her turn to have the ring printed. But then, she gets distracted by a sound coming from outside, prompting Titus to force her hand into the printing machine. Before the ring can be fully printed, Kane crashes into the room and immediately points a gun at Titus's head. He then reveals to Jupiter that Titus is planning to kill her after the marriage is sealed. Despite what Titus has done to her, Jupiter decides to pardon him and leaves the ship to go home. Back in the Space Police's ship, Jupiter gives Kane the object for his and Stinger's pardon. But after getting back to Earth, she finds that her family has been kidnapped by Balaam's soldiers. She is greeted instead by Mr. White and Gregan, who propose that she must come with them for her abdication of her royal title. Despite the danger, she agrees to come with them. 
Therefore, the three of them head to Balaam's domain while the space police assist them. However, Balaam's soldiers trick the space police by immediately closing the gate to the domain before they can enter. Because Balaam's dominion is inside a great big storm, this almost kills the space police, but they manage to get out of the storm. As such, Cain decides to go into the domain on his own to rescue Jupiter. On the other side, Balaam tells Jupiter that she must abdicate the title or else her family will be killed. Seeing that she needs more convincing, Balaam lets her see her mother, almost killed, forcing her to accept the abdication. However, she begins to have doubts about continuing the process because Earth will soon be harvested by Balaam anyway. For this reason, she refuses to give up the abdication, which angers Balaam. This is interrupted by the sudden entry of Mr. White, who informs him of Cain's entrance. Seeing Cain, Jupiter breaks the machine intended for abdication, making Balaam want to choke her. Luckily, she is rescued by Cain, who retrieves her from below by using his portal. He then shields her away from the enemies. At the heat of the moment, Jupiter kisses him for good luck. He then attacks Balaam's soldiers while Jupiter moves her family away from harm. But they don't know that Balaam is hiding from them and he decides to kill Jupiter with his own hands. He immediately attacks the distracted Jupiter, but she retaliates by firing a gun at his legs. Due to Kane's entrance earlier, the domain is slowly getting destroyed, providing the space police an opportunity to enter. The domain's deterioration has caused debris to fall down to the ground, opening a hole where Jupiter and Balaam fall down. They then manage to hold on to some railings. Wanting to avoid Balaam, Jupiter leaves him behind to search for a way to escape. Meanwhile, Cain has an intense fight with the monstrous Gregan. After battling in different places, Cain emerges as the victor, thus rescuing Jupiter's family. Despite already getting away from him, Jupiter eventually sees Balaam again, who attacks her with a metal rod. She immediately gains the upper hand, but she still does not kill him. Instead, Balaam falls to his doom as everything begins to completely collapse. They then manage to catch up with the space police ship as it goes through a portal back to Earth. Afterward, Jupiter returns to her old life on Earth, but she is happy with this. While her memories are intact, her family's memories are of course erased. Eventually, she happily receives the telescope that she always wants to have from her cousin. She then announces to her family that she has a date. Her date is no one but Kane, who has been reinstated again to the space military due to his invaluable service, thus regaining his military wings back. The movie ends with the two of them sharing a passionate kiss before flying away together. The movie seems to have an interesting premise, but that it sadly lacks in its execution. Still, the movie is interesting enough because it explores the idea that human beings are not the only intelligent life species in the universe. It also showcases the idea that since they are presumably much higher beings than us due to their advanced technologies, the aliens will ultimately view us as a simple means to an end, which in the case of the Abrasax family, an important ingredient for youth potions.